How are we all doing? I have no plan for the stream. Uh, I did see this funny thing on Twitter, though. <laughs> no, I really wanted to talk about. Why is Connor's little bro streaming? That's true. All right, so here's the tweet. Here's the tweet, right? <laughs> for an art lover like myself, this is a slice of heaven, he says. <laughs> <laughs> like how bad it is. It's so f ugly. <laughs> what is that? Like, what is that? For an odd lover like myself, this place is a slice of heaven. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> it's so bad. It's like someone made NFTs real. And so I got, I got curious. I got curious. How much do you think this is, chat? Throw some numbers out. Throw some numbers out. How much do you think this is, huh? Oh, 10K. <laughs> Let me show you how much it costs. $43,000. <laughs> for like a like, a, like a, a a lion smoking a cigar. So I got curious. I was like, all right, well, like what else? What else do they got? Because clearly these guys, <laughs> these guys know art. So I found their TikTok, and I just thought, like, let's have a look at some of these, right? Like, let's just have a look at some of the modern art. <laughs> look at it. It's fucking hideous. Thirty-five thousand euros. Like, what is this? <laughs> like, okay, actually, this go hard. This goes hard. Okay, actually, this does go hard. But what is this? Is this even legal? This just, this just doesn't even. <laughs> just, that's a, this is horrific. Like, this is just bad. The monkey is fifty k. This is fifty k. No, no, no. It looks so bad. What? <laughs> <laughs> it's so bad. Damn, I'm gonna I'm gonna screenshot Peaky Blinders <laughs> and, and, and charge 500k. <laughs> this uh, 3D masterpiece. <laughs> no, this looks awful. <laughs> like I'm like no. Nah. This is just so bad. No, no, that's awful. I'll pay you not to sell that. Oh, f off. This is the f off. Okay, that's actually the most hideous singular thing I've seen in my life. Yeah, all the brands are on here. You've got, you're absolutely breaking copyright. This is their most liked. 150,000 likes. Okay, I feel like that wrapping is that. that, that no, that is not enough wrapping. <laughs> This has been sold to a customer in Portugal. <laughs> Bro, assembly is going to be required when they get there. There is no shot that is making it. I mean, all of this is hideous. All of this. All right, step one. Step one, buy a $20 Daffy Duck thing off Amazon. Step two, get these bullshit crystals. Just putting crystals on something doesn't make it cool. And not, nor is that art. That's not even remotely transformative. This is like when they put gold on a steak. It, it's shit. I, 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 sometimes, you know, when you go to a cafe, I don't know if you've ever seen this. You go to a cafe and you see like the people like selling their artwork on the walls of the cafe and i'm like okay that sounded like 300 bucks i'm like okay that's a lot but like there's a reason there's a story there's a connection here and it looks nice most of the time it's like like they should do that you know kind of hates art i love art but i i despise making things expensive for no reason i i also got a someone gave me this game they wanted me to play i got sent this by the dev they were very pumped for me to play it. So I think the concept is that you just take pictures of things and you learn Japanese that way. Okay, what if I want to take a picture of the Shingo? Shingoki. Oh, that's kind of neat. Those are the kanji too. And they got hit by a car. Speaking of which, hey. Kuruma. Oh. Jido Hanbaiki. Jido Hanbaiki. I didn't know that. Jido Hanbaiki. I've actually never used that word before. What I call it? I, I actually don't know. I don't think I've ever had a situation where I've been talking about a vending machine. I would find some other way to explain it. Icon. Okay, we all know that one. Jutensha. Let's get a Jutensha in here. Jutensha. There's no shot I'm going to memorize the kanji from this, though. Uh, word set. Random. Newest. Oldest. Guess attempt. One. I have to find a daikon. Okay. So I can go around and find the word. Why is Connor watching a Rob CD stream? <laughs> this is just a Rob CD stream. You have to walk around and find everything. Remember it? Oh, look at that. Play again. Oh, wow. Isn't that convenient? Anything else? Oh, the kasa. Yes. To hold. Motsu. Motsu. Oh, so these are things to describe it. Noted, noted, noted. It's, it's kind of impressive because uh, when you only have uh, conversations at bars and hanging out with people, I, there's a lot of words I actually never use. Do you want to learn some basic nouns? Oh, absolutely. I think so. I think if you're wanting to learn Japanese and you want a fun way to do it, this is probably a good way. Oh, does it have the parking thing? Oh, it does. Oh, this kanji is a lifesaver. You gotta learn this one, chat. If you see this symbol, it means you can get in the taxi or it means that it's available. If you see anything else, it's not available. Get f 
Oh, Inu. Let's get the Inu. That's a cute ass dog. I know Fuwa Fuwa. Kawa, I know that too. My Japanese is weird. What do you mean? What are you talking about? There is more Japanese in my one nail than in your entire being. You speak nouns? Yeah, it's that's kind of how I've gotten by. Okane mochi. Yeah, people say that a lot. Bimbo. <laughs> Money comes up a lot in Japanese conversation. And if you call yourself a bimbo, you'll always get a laugh. You're like, nah, I'm a bimbo. Bimbo desu. Also, if you call someone else okane mochi, like if I'm at a bar and Pete buys drinks, I'll go, okane mochi, man. And then they'll go like, ah. A lot of people think that like, that it's, you have to be serious. It's all stuffy. Everything has to be serious. But like, people are very chill. People are normal. You can make fun of yourself. You can say bad Japanese stuff. It's it's all like the vibe. You don't always have to talk perfectly. Um, I think that's the mo the best way to improve and to get like learn actually like natural conversation. I have to do a lot of that. I, I don't. I've never used that word. I actually, I didn't even hear of this before. I, I get this one a lot. I get kusai a lot. Oh, I'm a crip now. Cool game. It is weird because uh, I haven't gone to Japanese classes in like a year and a half. And so most of my most of my Japanese just comes from talking. Did you learn during no lesson? I, I went to classes and I went I went every week uh, for two hours. Which is not a lot. It's not a lot at all. But I just wanted to make sure that like every week I was getting some practice in, right? It wasn't about like every week I want to make progress. It's like every week I want to use it. Because, you know, if I do like a 13 hour stream, I'm not talking Japanese at all. Uh, on the other hand, to get to the point where I would be able to actually like be able to use it for content in a, in a meaningful way, it would require me to get to like like N, N1 or N2, which would take so long. It would take a, at least like a year and a half. I don't, I don't, I don't really know. Language is also not about a utility. It's about... Utility. It's also about expanding your mind. I mean, I, I, yeah, I mean, I think that's fair. There, there are two ways you can approach life and learning in general, right? You can look at it as how does this help what I'm doing? How does this help me get better at something? Or how can I have fun with this? Uh, and for me, I do not enjoy learning languages. It has never been fun for me. It is something that I've despised my entire life. And so then I, my learning language was not out of passion or love or interest. It was out of necessity. And then it became kind of interesting for me and it became kind of satisfying to learn more. And now I do like learning more Japanese, but not like trying to get to a level at uh, like an N2 or something or pass this test. It's like, I don't know how long the stream and then lasts. All I know is that generally if you take a break or you slow down or focus on other shit, it, it doesn't go well for what you're doing. And so that's kind of why I was like, okay, look, I'm, I'm doing all of this stuff. It's going really well. I should just keep doing it. Make the bank and then I can chill out and do what I want once I'm set and I can take care of myself. <laughs> uh, the Felix way? <laughs> I think that like, given how YouTube and Twitch and stuff has evolved, because like Jerma is retired, like semi-retiring and doing more of the producing side and creative side. I think there's a huge industry for that now. I don't want to do that though. Not now, but maybe when I'm like 40, I think I, I would I would enjoy being able to help another creator who is really promising, right? I think that's fun. I think that's exciting. Am I retiring? No, no, I'm, tw I'm 27, chat. When I'm 40, I'll have been doing this for 20 years. That's so long to be doing the same thing. But also I, I, I love the idea of getting to 40 and being someone who doesn't give a f doing streams where I'm just saying wild shit. That sounds fun. But yeah, no, anyway, learning Japanese. It's been great. Uh, it's been really satisfying, but I've definitely learned it in like a very unorthodox way. Literally just from talking. When I'm learning something, if I don't fully commit to it, I, I'm just so bad at like actually picking up stuff and being consistent with it. Is it easy to learn Japanese? It's actually like not that hard to like being like conversational in Japanese is not that hard. It just depends how much you drink. <laughs> it's time confidence and willingness to fail. People in Japan are very chill. If you speak Japanese to them and they can see that you're learning and you're trying, people do not care if you don't, if you aren't fluent. So just be, be confident. You look at like two people, right? Like you look at Pete and you look at like Jerry, right? Jerry is a native in Japanese. Pete, <laughs> pretty far from it, I'd say. Uh, but if you if you gave like them a night to make as many friends as Japanese people as possible, Pete would Pete would do it. Pete's got the confidence. Pete would make friends so fast. It's because you know Jerry just doesn't like. That's not like what Jerry does. Jerry doesn't just go and talk to random people. It's like if Natsuki walked up to you in a bar, you'd be like, "This guy's f***ing funny. This guy's great. I love this guy. I envy your lack of social anxiety." That's okay. See, that's like I think every single time you see someone who's confident, it's a rare case that they've always been confident in their whole life. And I lied to myself into thinking that I was confident. I would lie and say that like I. I yeah, I got it. I got it. And I was freaking 
out the entire time. But then it would kind of work. You need to have that that feedback loop of, oh, nothing bad happened when I said these things. That's that's how we have some very bad people <laughs> in certain places. <laughs> but you should use it for good reasons. Bad things do happen when I talk there. Like, I think if you are having bad experiences when you are the one engaging or initiating, I almost feel like that's like, that's got to be on you. I feel like most people, you need to reframe how you look at things. So I think most people are pretty chill. Like when people get spoken to, they don't want to have a bad interaction, right? So if, if you are talking to someone and every single time is a bad interaction, okay, is it bad because they said it's bad or is it bad because you felt like it didn't go how you envisioned? Because those are two very different things. It's all about reading the room. Reading the room is so important, but it's very tough. I know it's like a hard thing to do. You know what's funny actually? So I, I got recommended this video with, with this guy broke down my social interaction with him <laughs> like it sounds unhinged but it was it was it was actually pretty good it was actually pretty wholesome it was just explaining how i i did a good job kind of not making it awkward and controlling the conversation if you think about that normally an awkward interaction takes two people generally like right normally so you can you can kind of like if you can sense an interaction incoming an awkward one you can like fucking reset the reset the energy i don't know how to explain this it's very tough. What are you talking about? This is me trying to explain social interactions and how to get better at them. Noted, go to last save point. Let's do a stream where I just coach someone into social interactions. I just, I just backseat them. Tell them, tell them this. Fart really loudly right now. Can you turn off your ad manager? You don't need to run ads anymore. We need to, to, to run ads. One, so I can pay you. <laughs> and mainly the pre-rolls. The pre-rolls get turned off if we occasionally play ads. So when people join the stream, they don't get ads. And also it means that I don't really like need to incentivize you guys to sub because instead of you guys having to pay money, I can just take money from companies, which I much prefer. <laughs> Does that make Emma a mega corporation with how much she sends on TTS? Does that make Emma a mega corporation? How much she, yeah, basically. Pretty much all the TTS things are just going to paying people to make cool stuff. Love the chill stream. Yeah, we don't do these often. I do like just yapping with you guys sometimes. I can't wait for another IRL going to stream that chill. I do want to do one again. It, you know, it's just been hard because the whole nuisance YouTuber live streamer people in Japan really kind of soured the vibe of doing those. Because I didn't want people to think that when I go outside and stream, it's just to get f drunk and do dumb shit. And that's also like, I, I don't, there's only like few people I would trust with that. It's one of the only things when you're live streaming, it's like, I need someone who can not get smashed uh, because that is a liability. Americans kick W. Most Americans cannot handle their drink. A lot of guys makes a joke when I when I land. He's like, "You good? You, you don't need a beer or anything?" I was like, "What the?" F I'm like, "It's different. It's different here. It's different in Japan. You don't understand. It's a different culture. You and your American with your Lacroix. What the heck is that? Give me a beer. You can't drink till you look over 21." <laughs> The thing in the UK is that I th I felt like by the time I was 21, I'd already gotten all my dumb drinking moments out of the way. So I felt like I could finally like be more responsible. I think if your parents in your house permit that you can drink, you can drink at like five. Like if your dad hands you a beer and you're six years old in the UK, everyone's gonna think you're a terrible parent, but there's nothing legally against that. I could be wrong. They don't tell my legal, this is not legal advice. <laughs> don't give your six year old kid beer. Can you drink at the age of five? It is not illegal for someone between the ages of five and 17 to drink alcohol at home or on private premises. What's wrong with age four? Yeah, I feel like it's kind of f***ed up. They, that's the cutoff. Because that's when, actually, in age five is when kids get fun because <laughs> you can give them beer. Doesn't everyone have a sip of their mom and dad's beer? Yeah, absolutely. I remember, I remember I went to my parents. My parents loved to tell me about this. I like had a sip of the beer. Seeing the bubbles of the beer and stuff, it looks amazing to a kid. You're like, oh my God, it's gonna, it's gonna taste like Coke or something. And so, you know, you're like, all right, I'll, like, dad, let me try it. And my dad's like, <laughs> okay, yeah. Have a sip, have a sip, have a sip. And I'm like, ah! <laughs> and I'm like, I'm never ever gonna drink alcohol. That shit's gross. Why would I ever drink that? And then 10 years later, they still remember I said that. And like, they always bring it up. My dad did that with cigs, Lamau. Ah, oh, cigarettes are gross. I just can't. I can't do it. Cigars are cool though. Okay, I mean, listen, if it's the the boys, you know, Gaunt, Gaunt's wedding day, you're like, all right, all right, we gotta, okay, all right, fine. I mean, it's with the boys. We gotta do one. It's a special occasion. Just a little cancer as a treat. It's not even as a, I don't even like it. It's not even as a treat. I'm like, all right, the boys have brought cigars. I guess I'm, I guess I'm doing this, dude. I I've been destroying Indian curry for like five days in a row and I cannot stop farting. It's been horrible. None of you guys need to know that, but I've probably farted five times this stream already, man. And you, you, 
Thank God you can't hear. I'm risking it. The noise gate. Like, I, I think I Googled one time. I was like, how many? Because I was like, surely I'm farting too much. No, not like recently, but this was a while back. And I was like, I must be farting too much. How many farts is too many farts? How many how many farts do you think is too many farts, chat? Someone said 100, which is what I think I'm at right now. But apparently it's 13 to 21 times a day. I feel like I don't fart 13 times a day. Listen, the curry's so good. I'm willing to suffer for it. It's just so good, chat. It's so good. What kind of curry? Indian curry. Japanese curry is mid as fuck. It's just so bland. And in, in comparison, what's the Final Fantasy VII Rebirth playthrough? Eh. Am I crazy that it doesn't interest me? You are crazy. I just feel like it's a, it's like a different game entirely. Like it's a different experience. And I, I kind of liked what I signed up to for the first one. I also realized, Chad, I don't think I f with games. <laughs> and this is so ridiculous to say this as an actor myself. If there's a lot of dialogue, I way prefer to voice act it myself. I don't like it when there's voice acting. I feel like it takes away a lot of the fun stuff that I can do and what I can add to the stream. And Final Fantasy VII, I really enjoyed that I got to voice act it. Like, I I, that was super fun. I think last time I checked, it was a two hour runtime, but the entire Final Fantasy VII cut down to two hours with a ton of voice over there. I'm really excited for that one to come out. Cause you know, we released the Final Fantasy VIII video and I didn't know we were releasing it. And I, I kind of wanted to do voiceover for it. We didn't do any. And I just feel like that story is so convoluted that it kind of needs voiceover to help tie it together. I'm, I'm, a firm, I'm a firm believer that voiceover is like the key to videos being good a lot of the time. But the problem is that voiceover takes forever. Like it's, it's so long. Cause like what I'll do is, is I'll get a rough draft and I'll just watch it and record voiceover as I go. Some people do that streamers first. I think that's a bad way to stream though. You don't only want to have one way of reaching your viewers, right? Like for me, being able to like tweet stuff to you guys is helpful because I don't always want to have to explain things through streams or videos, right? If you're a streamer, you're a successful streamer, your goal should then be not to, how do I make only that number go bigger? But how do I make all the numbers go bigger? And that's something that you should definitely invest in. Do you manage all those platforms yourself? I'm, I'm always keeping up with them, but I'm not the one doing every single decision. For like the, the Connor Dog channel, every single thumbnail I used to approve and I used to go over it with Mood and we used to brainstorm. And then I was like, look, let's spend like, a crazy amount of money and hire just a bazillion f thumbnail artists and let's get some good thumbnails going. Let's get a style. And sometimes they serve the purpose, sometimes they don't. And I think that's fine. I I'm a firm believer that thumbnail and title are very important, but also if your video is good, it'll also just do good. If people click on a video and they watch the whole thing, YouTube's going to push it more. I found it frustrating as a streamer, and I couldn't believe that streamers did this, that they would stream for eight hours, have an amazing stream, and then they were okay with that just not existing anymore. I was like, oh, that's crazy. I would never film a video and just be like, all right, I'm done. I'm not gonna edit it, I'm not gonna put it up. Like, that's, what? And streamers used to do this all the time. I can't believe that. There's something to be said as well about how like, you shouldn't always focus on those kind of things as well. Maybe you're just enjoying it as a part of itself and yada, yada, yada. And I think that's fair as well. That's an argument. Some of the best streamers of all time are people who don't give a single fuck about this stuff. You know, like your, your Tyler Wands, your, uh, I mean, Tyler Wands are the best example I can think of. But not everyone can be Tyler Wan. Like, like, like yeah, like Forsen, right? Like, not, not everyone can be Tyler Wan. So we don't have the energy to go as hard as you do, Connor. I, no, I'm just addicted. I can't stop, chat. I can't stop making. I like making things. And I also like getting better at understanding it because uh the one thing i hate is that like when i go into these meetings or whatever with these uh, people who are like agents or whatever they are they try to treat me like i don't know anything uh it drives me insane so i don't have the problem anymore i think just having the confidence to be like no nah, i think i know what's right like I, I know how to do my own job now i you know and having trust in that is important i think professionals don't know shit i think like 80 percent of agents are just, just not, not good i'm also just yapping my ass off right now full-on yapping <laughs> this is the main channel based on crane games? No. I've got like five videos that are basically nearly done and none of them are crane games. We had some that were supposed to come out and sponsored, delayed it and stuff. No way. I, I do. You can ask Paul. Ask Paul, cameraman Paul. Hey, I have a question. How do you stay motivated to upload on Twitch and YouTube? That's tough, man. Um, It's almost like a, a losing battle, you know? I think that you, you speak to any YouTuber or streamer that you like, odds are nowadays they started out of just wanting to like fuck around and find out. Uh, and I was no different. For me, it was just a pure hobby i just thought it was funny and then when i realized it was kind of good i was like oh, okay i was like oh maybe i can uh maybe i can like push this more and so i think that like having that motivation from a, coming from a place where there is no desire to be seen is very important i think man the, the game's changed so much you know like my my foot's in the door so like i'm chilling but like if i had to start now now yeah right now i just start youtubing right, i would come out the womb and go speed run start start youtubing go, 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 go. <laughs> I'm boned. I don't think I, I don't think I've, I pop off. It is just straight up harder now. You have to be better. I'm very, very, very fortunate now where I can just come on here and yap for you guys and you guys seem to not mind. And, I, and I'm really grateful. I really am. Back in the day, I'm getting to that point now though where I can, like 10 years, That's it's, isn't that insane? I uploaded my first video in like April of 2014. 
pretty crazy. I don't know, man. It's, it, I, whenever I think about it, it always makes me feel like weird. And I'm like, that's strange. Because nothing else in my life I'd done that long other than like school. And even then, like I was moving around and doing other shit, right? What a weird, what a weird concept to be like 27 and have been doing something for 10 years. Do you have any other plans before committing to Twitch and YouTube? Honestly, my plan, my go-to plan to just do engineering and then play as much video games in my spare time. That was the plan because I had an engineering degree and I was going to get a nice cushy engineering job, become a chartered engineer and just spend all my, my money on video games and vibing because getting a job as an engineer was, was really easy because the UK needed a lot of engineers. As I started uploading in, in university, I realized, oh, I actually kind of like doing this a lot more. And then that's when I pivoted. I, th I think th there was a lot of Pressure, a lot of pressure that was put on uh, on everyone that's like, you have to succeed at this. Don't f up. Don't choose the wrong thing. And I was like, oh, okay. That's kind of scary. But I was like, nah, actually, you know what? I think I'll just try it for like two years. You can still f around till 23. <laughs> that's the cutoff. Stop f around at 23. Get it together. Get your shit together. You're 23. I don't, I don't think as a streamer, I have anything to give you of value. I'm, like ad advice wise. You swag money. I mean, that's fuck. <laughs> so we... <laughs> <laughs> Believe in yourself. <laughs> okay, cool. Why did you type f in my chat? Why did you just type f <laughs> Okay, thank you. Thank you, mod.